is my first time we're gonna scan through it together see what i think i'm gonna you know go real quick so let's look at this pie first one thing i want to take a actually note about is look at this so look at the volume don't worry about the price section as much but look at the volume so on these selling days the volume is not much higher but it still is higher even though on friday it got bought up it was on a lot lighter volume than the day before but now that that could just mean that so this volume this candle i think that people realize oh it's pretty oversold or whatever so maybe they bought up and pushed it up it's just stuff to think about but i kind of think that more people were selling and less people actually bought and then people did but then why wouldn't they want to sell you know you gotta create a narrative around this but in short i don't really know what to think about this uh, we do have a rising support kind of right here that's really loose i wouldn't you know bet my life on it but anyway that's that we'll take a look at the gold market i mean it had a rough like, end of the week but for the most part this thing is zooming silver is doing roughly the same it's moving a lot and i'm very sad because <laughs> i still i wanted to i wanted it to retest down here i thought it was but it never did so i don't have a, a, as big as a position as i want but it's it's whatever but yeah it's moving this is my, my theory, you know, test uh, this $18 level, come back down, you know, sell off a little bit, maybe push up, but in the long run, you know, we got this two standard deviation line really holding it down. I mean, that it could break it easily. I'm not saying it, had, it, it will hold it down, but for the most part, relative price action history, this is uh, the oversold condition, but I still think silver is undervalued and like a five year time frame. Some trades I'm in right now are actually AMD. This snuck up on me real quick. So, right here we had this like, we had this buy, you know, we had some buying wakes around this area. And I think it's just some older, oversold area. Pressure started building up. If we look at a lower time frame, you can kind of see like it just, look at all this like pressure and price action in these wicks. One wick, two wick, you got three, four, five, six, seven. Resistance. From my experience, whenever it shoots up above 
this above the price and it gets slapped down. There's too much selling pressure, especially on light volume, and it usually just rolls over. Now, it did do that. Um, I mean, it, it could still shoot above, but from, from a probability point of view, this was going to get slapped down because this candle, but you can just see the volume and the price of the candle. Um, that's just how it happened. It could have went the other way, but I was keeping it on close eye. It was also wavering at the, the one standard deviation zone, which isn't too significant, but it's, um, I don't know, this is very cookie cutter. It's actually really interesting. We can do a whole video on talking about the every candle, not every candle, but the major candles at the price, at the support and resistance level. And the volume relation, it's, it'd be interesting. Last quick thing. Uh, X put on huge gains, like 10% on Friday. Not really exactly sure what happened, but yeah, I did not buy any of this yet. I was kind of waiting for it to hit like a $6 price level, like around here, or at least go to this support at 6.30. Did not get there, but I did some fundamental research on steel, US Steel, and it didn't seem like a terrible company, but it definitely is so uh, risky. So from a technical point of view, I think I might take a little position if it gets back down here. I mean, very small, like, like I would not. I would be fine losing all that money. So let's quickly scan through some stocks. I don't want to waste too much time because we already spoke about a lot of stuff. We're just scanning to see if we have any swing trading patterns or something. ADI was on the watch list last week. This pattern I drew was not even relevant. You can see it like broke out, but it didn't really do anything. Now it's just like that. So there's nothing really going on there.
guys know. I don't know what it's um, going to do, obviously. Like, this thing is like 100% up. I was trading it here and then here. And made very small moves. I should just held it. You know, that's one of those things, but I can't predict the future. Neo yeah, will be on the watch, I guess, but. No, I don't know. This has to fall soon. Maybe to like this. I don't think it's going to fall back down the air, but it should fall back to a realistic or, or a better level. Uh, but, you know, all the retail guys are, are like me. I guess I'm a retail guy. I'm not saying that, but. The retail guys are going to continue pushing it up even higher. Prudential Center is a company that I have started a position investing in. Not very large, but it's at a position or a point where I might pick up more. Not entirely sure because um, I don't think I want that big of a position anyway. So I'm not really seeing a whole lot. Wow, what did Roku do? What the heck? What happened? Uh, there was some news on it. Peloton app comes to Roku devices. That's interesting. I always get slammed on Roku, so RTX is a support, the rising support roughly area. Sony. Well, interesting. Uh, Spotify, Skyworks. I don't like this. This. I like the company. I don't like the stock. It's just dumb. It's very. Um, I don't know. It just it seems a little too good to be true. Target is, although it's like channeling down. It's a lot of buying at this level. A lot. Wow. What, what's up with this candle? Look at that volume. Um, good. The volume is really dwindling at like this, around this level. Interesting. I don't see anything I like. Um, I haven't been checking. See, Tesla's, uh, Tesla's crazy. I just always at a thousand bucks at the end of July. That's just insane, bro. TSM has uh, earnings this week. This thing shot right out. That's a, that's a crazy play. I, it went right past the all-time high. It just broke it. But I was not in that. I wish not. But that's a good company to invest in regardless if you're just trading. Or, but as long as you get it, you know, at a good price point. Twitter with earnings is this. Alta, let's go. Okay, Alta. They're in a pretty good downtrending pattern. Alta's at like a 188 price level where a lot of action's been happening and buying. Look at the, look at the, these two candles on that price. This candle's not too big, but UNH, same thing. Uh, United Health Group. This fair value line, 200 bucks. Uh, a lot of buying. That's actually really interesting. Sorry. 
my opinion. But they moved on like HMY like that that crazy like that mall. I added some I added some shares at CL down here. I think I got it on this this day because I was like, oh I don't know what this is doing and I kinda want some shares. It was only a small position, but hopefully it gets back to like like thirty bucks or thirty nine bucks. Add some. Outlay company I think is really good right now. Here we got NDM. There's a lot of good stuff. We could potentially be picking up real soon, but it just depends, you know, where I, I do need the money. Right now my cash is like maybe fifteen to ten percent because I have two trades on at AMD and Activision, so if something happens to the market, I'm not in a good position to buy. But I guess also am, you know, I'm, I'm in a pretty decent position. Yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Let me know what's on your watch list. So I guess what's actually really only on my watch list is I'm just managing the two trades that I have. We have X, I wanna see what happens here. Uh man, Tesla and Neo, stuff like that, even Nikola. Um I don't see really any other swing trades.